Today is the Feast of Corpus Christi, when the Church gives thanks to God for the institution of the Blessed Sacrament of the Lord's Body and Blood, Holy Communion. Fifty-five years ago, I was an undergraduate at the College of Corpus Christi in Cambridge, and for the last two years it has been my pride and privilege to have returned to the College as chaplain, though sadly my ministry there has been interrupted by the pandemic that has interrupted and rearranged all our lives, sometimes drastically. In the old court of Corpus Christi College in Cambridge is a carved effigy of a bird in a nest feeding its young. One of many such images which adorn the college, emblazoned as it is on the college tie and flag and countless representations in glass, wood, metal or stone. Curiously, this bird, this pelican, is not feeding her fledglings with berries or insects or the flesh of other creatures, but with its own flesh and blood. The legend has it that the pious pelican gives her own self for the sake of her young. The College of Corpus Christi was founded in 1352 in the wake of the plague, another global pandemic that decimated large swathes of England from 1348. Partly as a thanksgiving to God at the end of the plague and partly to help replace the priests who had perished while themselves ministering to the sick and burying the dead, the two Hound guilds of Corpus Christi and the Blessed Virgin Mary came together to found Bennett College after the next door church of St. Bennett. But the college soon became known as Corpus Christi after its founding benefactors. Some hundred years before the foundation of Corpus, the greatest of the medieval theologians, Thomas Aquinas, had written about the pelican in one of his hymns. In his hymn, Adoro Te, in praise of the body of Christ present in the sacrament of the Eucharist, he wrote, O loving pelican, O Jesu Lord, unclean I am, but cleanse me in thy blood, of which one single drop for sinners spilled can purge the entire world of all its guilt. The pelican thus became the inevitable symbol of Christ the Redeemer, shedding his blood and giving his body for the world's redemption. And so the pelican in her piety became the appropriate icon for the College of Corpus Christi, both in Cambridge and later in Oxford, and for the great festival that celebrates the body of Christ. This feast of Corpus Christi always falls on a Thursday. And although we stand this side of Easter, able now to glory in the triumph of the cross, our thoughts are taken back to the upper room on the night that Jesus was betrayed, a Thursday night. Corpus Christi takes us back to the body of Christ who lived and walked as flesh and blood, fully human. The man who not only changed individual human lives, but the direction of history by becoming part of that history, entering it, enduring it, redeeming it, and transfiguring it. The Feast of Corpus Christi takes us back to the humanity of God, etched forever on the conscience and the consciousness of humankind in the shape of a cross. And this feast points us also to another celebration which always takes place on a Thursday, Ascension Day. Corpus Christi placards the mystery of the God who spent himself to the uttermost, like the pelican in her piety, to feed us and save us. Corpus Christi also points to the glorified Christ whose body entered the heavens there to sit at the right hand of the Father with the world in his hands. 
but the hands that hold the world, the feet that trample evil underfoot, the head that is crowned in glory, still bears the mark of the passion. The body we celebrate today, the body of the risen and ascended Lord Jesus, is a body which carries the pain and suffering and fragility and fear of our world into the heart of God. The pain, grief and loss of the current global pandemic, the misery of ongoing conflicts in Syria and Yemen, the recent devastating floods in India and Bangladesh, and last year's terrible conflagration at Notre Dame in Paris, which seems so symbolic of a world on fire. All these events and many more are carried into the heart of God. And there at the Father's side, the body of Christ, who has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, ever lives to make intercession for us. And one last thought. This feast of Corpus Christi not only always falls on a Thursday to remind us of those other Thursdays of commemoration and celebration, it always falls on the Thursday after Trinity Sunday. And I can't believe that that juxtaposition of dates was simply coincidental. For Trinity Sunday celebrates the unity of God and the community of God. Our Christian belief in a God who is one and three is not only a mathematical conundrum to the sceptical, it is a blasphemy to the monotheist religions of Judaism and Islam, but in the face of all the odds, Christians have gone on rehearsing their belief in God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. As though the notion of God as community might have something profound and simple and true to teach us. Perhaps that God is love. And by its nature, love requires more than one. God is love. God loves us. God loves us to love each other. This feast of Corpus Christi reminds us, because of its proximity to Trinity Sunday, that God is a community of love. And Corpus Christi reminds us too that we are a community of love. The body of Christ we celebrate here in bread and wine is pointing us to the historical Jesus whose body was broken to make us whole and to the ascended Lord Jesus whose body carries our hum humanity into heaven. And the body of Christ, which at every celebration of the Holy Communion, the body of Christ, which is put into our hands as we kneel to receive God's own self, is making us, by that very act, into his body. We, by God's grace, are Corpus Christi, Christ's body in the world, fed from the flesh and blood of his breast, so that we in our turn may feed God's young, who thereby become themselves Corpus Christi, the body of Christ. Out of the ravages of disease, disorder and disaster, as much in our own day as in the, as in the 14th century, may come not only despair and desperation, but compassion, care for others and self-sacrifice such as we have been experiencing on our own doorstep in the last months of lockdown and social distancing. The pious pelican is the icon of the College of Corpus Christi. And by symbolising the self-giving of the Redeemer, points us to divine qualities that can be experienced and expressed in the humanity with which we attend to our world, in its beauty and fragility and to our neighbours in their need. And so we give thanks to God for the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for the world's need, and especially for all who are most affected by the coronavirus, for those who are sick, 
and those who nurse them, their families, and all who are enduring hardship because of the necessary constraints that currently shape our lives. We remember the vulnerable, the anxious, and the fearful. And we give thanks for our membership of the body of Christ and for the ways in which we are nurtured and sustained by word and sacrament and empowered to be Christ's body in the world. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee to give us a due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, your honour and glory, world without end. Amen. We pray too for all places of education, especially on this day for the colleges of Corpus Christi at Oxford and at Cambridge, and for all whose education at school, college and university has been interrupted. We pray especially for all young people whose future opportunities will have been affected by the closure of their schools and their academies. O God, who in a wonderful sacrament has given us a memorial of thy cross and passion, grant us, we beseech thee, so to venerate the sacred mystery of thy body and blood that we may ever perceive within ourselves the fruit of thy redemption, who now livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen.